So, let us look at another problem that we keep talking about which is the traveling salesman problem. Uh, the problem of traveling salesman which many of you should be familiar with, he says that given a set of cities and given a distance measure between every pair of cities, the task is to find a Hamil Hamiltonian cycle having the least cost. So, a Hamiltonian cycle is that you start from some city and visit every other city exactly once and then you come back to the original city. If the underlying graph is not a completely connected graph, so for example, if you were to look at a road network, road networks are not connected completely, uh, they are only connected to the neighbor, neighboring cities and so on. So, for our algorithm, we can convert that into a completely graph by adding edges with very high cost, uh, which would be typically not preserved. The thing about TSP is that it is a problem which is much harder than uh, the, the SAT problem. In fact, it is in a class which is called as NP hard. Uh, as, as a very simple calculation, you can see that if you have n cities to go to, you can choose the first one in n ways, the second one in n minus 1 ways, the third one in n minus 2 ways and so on. So, essentially the number of possible ways that you could traverse this n cities is factorial n and if you look at the factorial function, you can see that it grows much, much, much faster than the, than the exponential function which is 2 raised to n for SAT problem and the TSP problem is in fact much harder than the SAT problem. For that reason, many uh, people consider it to be the holy grail of computer science to solve the TSP problem. Now, if you are interested in the TSP problem, I would strongly recommend that you go to this uh, uh, library called TSP Live, which is maintained by the University of Heidelberg. And they not only have a nice history of the TSP problem, they have uh, a study of different kinds of distance functions. So, for example, if you were to do uh, the TSP on a globe like our earth, then the distance function is different from the distance on a plane which is the Euclidean distance and how does that affect uh, the search and so on. And not only that, they have a collection of problems which are completely solved. We said that the, 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 the complexity can be factorial in nature. So, they have actually taken the trouble to take some problems, run them for months and months on end on their machines and giving you the optimal solution. So, you could always use it for comparing an algorithm that you are doing uh, to using to solve TSP. So, the figure on the right hand shows some cities in India uh, which uh, a traveling salesperson would have to visit. So, I think the cities are Chennai and Bangalore and Goa and Hyderabad and Bombay, Kolkata, Delhi and Chandigarh. So, the tour on the left hand side which is shown in red as you can see it does not look like a very efficient or optimal tour. Whereas, the tour on the right hand side which is shown in blue looks like that it might be the least cost or close to the least cost tour and the task is to find such tours. Even if we cannot find the optimal tours, we would be happy if we find as low cost tours as possible. Now, before we move on to the perturbation methods that we are interested in, let us quickly look at uh, uh, the greedy constructive methods which have been popularly used for solving the TSP. And the most intuitive and the simplest is using the nearest neighbor heuristic, which simply says that start at some city and move to the nearest neighbor from there and from there move to the nearest neighbor and keep constructing a tour. Make sure that you do not construct a shorter loop than the n cities that you want to cover essentially. Now, if you imagine this algorithm running on this uh, set of cities, you can see that uh, there are cases as exemplified here in this diagram, where this algorithm will not give you the optimal solution. So, for example, if you were to start at uh, this city, then you would end up going here, then here, then here, then here, then here, because you are moving to the nearest neighbor. And of course, you cannot close this gap from here. So, then you will go to this one and from here you will go to this one and from here you will come to this one. Now, you can see that this is not clearly the optimal tour because to go to this city 
it would have been much better if you had connected them to these two cities, but the nearest neighbor algorithm cannot see that. We will see a, uh, another example very shortly. A variation of that would be why extend the tour only in one direction? You can extend the partial tour at either end, it is possible that that might give you a better solution. Another very popular algorithm is called the greedy heuristic. Uh, and for those of you who have studied the minimum spanning trees, you will see that this is reasonably close to the Kruskal's algorithm for doing that. And what it says is that sort the edges and add the shortest available edge to the tour as long as it does not close the loop prematurely essentially. So, as you can see it also makes sense because you want tours to have short edges and this algorithm is saying that you know take the shortest edges first and then keep adding the, them essentially. So, here is an example of the nearest neighbor heuristic with a slightly bigger example and supposing this was to be your start state and you kept moving to the nearest neighbor, then presumably assuming that you know the, the distance function is reflected uh, on the location of these cities on this on this map here, which means that the distance are proportional to the distances on the map, uh, then you would get a tour which looks something like this and this is how the algorithm will proceed moving on to the nearest neighbor at every stage. So, we are assuming that the, the actual distance of every, every cost of each edge is proportional to the Euclidean distance as shown on this diagram. And you can see that the nearest neighbor algorithm typically performs well in the beginning, but towards the end when it has exhausted some of those earlier parts, it ends up picking some very long edges. If you were to do the TSP, the, if you were to do the greedy algorithm, then what this diagram is showing is some of the early edges that would get added to the uh, to the to the tour, and you can see that uh, from then onwards it might try to add more. So, so the remember that the heuristic is add the shortest edge that you can add to a tour. So, for example, the next edge that you might add might be this one and then perhaps next the next edge could be this one and maybe the next one could be this one, but that you cannot add because this node would have three edges. So, you are forced to take that back, perhaps you could add this one and uh, maybe this one and maybe this one and so on as you can see that we are constructing a reasonably good tour, uh, but it may not be the best possible tour that you could imagine. Another heuristic, so these are all heuristic algorithms, these are all greedy algorithms in the sense they do not take the, the, they do not take exponential amount of time, they do not take factorial amount of time which is what a brute force algorithm would do and they try to solve it in some polynomial time and that is why they also call the heuristic uh, heuristics, some people call them as meta heuristics, uh, but they try to find a solution as quickly as possible. So, the savings heuristic says that you first construct n minus 1 tours of length 2 anchored on some base ver vertex. So, choose one base vertex and construct n minus 1 tours and then you perform n minus 2 merge operate operator operations to construct the tour. In each merge operation, you will take two small tours and combine them into a larger tour. So, the operation that you would do is remove two edges connected to the base vertex from some two loops and add an edge to connect the two hanging vertices. Which two edges? The two edges are chosen such that the maximal savings um, in cost in the resulting graph essentially. So, here is a small uh, illustration of how this works. Uh, so, you start off by constructing uh, n minus 1 tours in this example, there are 5 cities and therefore, you can see that there are 4 tours which have been con constructed and the red node is the base vertex. And then in the first step, we remove those 2 red edges that we have seen marked in this and connect the 
resulting uh, hanging edges by joining them here. So, then you would get a tour which looks like this and next time we remove the two red edges that are marked again on this side and we will get a tour like this and then again we remove the two red edges again remember that we are taking two red edges which are going out of the base uh, base vertex the base vertex was connected to n minus 1 cities to start with and in the end it should be connected only to two cities because that is the property of a tour for the traveling salesman problem that every city should be connected exactly to two cities once that you visit from and then one that you move to. So, we are removing these two red, red edges here and uh, now we have a final tour as you can see every city is connected to two cities and we have a tour which does not look like the best tour. Uh, probably the best tour would be like this assuming that the heuristic function is Euclidean in nature the, the distance function is Euclidean in nature, but it is a reasonably good tour it is not it is not too bad essentially. So, here is a illustration of uh, some experimentation that has been done taken from this site here. Uh, it shows uh, uh, how what are the nature of the tours that these different algorithms that we have just looked at uh, do that. You can see that the nearest neighbor tour is probably the worst. It has got this many long edges which it has ended up adding and as we saw this typically happens towards the end of the cycle. When it has exhausted the shorter neighbors then it has to go to a neighbor far away. Uh, the, greedy, the greedy tour remember the greedy tour says that add short edges first but towards the end it ends up add, again adding some very long edges essentially. The savings tour seems much better if you look at it visually uh, uh, at least there are no crisscrossing edges which is what you would expect in a good tour. So, if there are two edges which are crossing each other it probably means that you have a, a bad tour essentially. The savings tour does not have any crisscrossing edges and it looks reasonably good and on the bottom right we see the optimal tour and you can see that that has a similar look as the savings edges, but is is in fact the optimal tour. So, let us now move to the solution space uh, problem of uh, perturbation of, uh, of a tour. So, if you have this tour which is given here and very often we represent a tour as a permutation of cities. So, for example, if we say that A, C, D, B, E is a tour, then this representation is called the path representation and what it says is that you start at the city A, go to the city C, go to the city D from there, then to B, then to E and implicitly you come back to A. So, if this uh, would were to be a path representation then you can see that we have a list of cities. So, one perturbation operator can be two city exchange what it says is that exchange the location of two cities in the path representation which basically means that you remove the edges that were originally connected to the two cities uh, which which would have been like this this here and this here and this here and this here. So, you remove this, you remove this, you remove this and remove this and then connect the edges again to give you a new tour. So, if this was a tour for example uh, and if these are the two cities that you are exchanging then the resulting tour would look something like this essentially. Hmm. What you see on the left hand side is something like a path representation, what you see on the right hand side is something like a tour uh, arranged in a visual, visually appealing format essentially. So, how many neighbors will this perturbation operator give you? You can choose two cities in NC two ways and uh, therefore, if you started with five cities then you would have 10 operators, 10, 10 neighbors and so on. Very often one prefers to use an edge exchange instead of a city exchange because what is 
demonstrated here is an edge exchange. So, the two edges on the left hand side which are shown on the dotted lines are removed and two new edges are added, but in practice the move from right to left would have been preferable and since in edge exchange in two edge exchange what are you doing you are saying that remove two edges from your tour and reconnect the four cities which were connecting those two edges it could be three also in some cases with new edges. So, since you are allowed to remove some two edges one heuristic that you could follow here is that remove two large edges. So, you construct a tour for example, using a greedy algorithm or the nearest neighbor algorithm or the savings algorithm and then you do this two edge exchange on, on the constructed tour and what you do is you remove two large edges and replace them with two hopefully shorter edges and hopefully that will be done in a better way. But if you look at the space generated by this algorithm it also requires it generates n c 2 neighbors because you can remove two edges remember that with n cities there are n edges in a tour. Another possibility is to do three edge exchange in three edge exchange uh, you remove three edges. So, the edges that are, we have removed I am drawing here with red. So, if you remove these three edges you can fill them in as you can see in four different ways. Uh, and you can remove three edges in n c 3 ways. So, th that gives a much d denser neighborhood function. So, you can see that even in the T S V you could have used an algorithm like variable neighborhood descent and typically what you might do is you might start off with some, some greedy algorithm which will give you an initial tour and then apply one of these perturbation operators to try and get better tours essentially. In the next few classes we will also see stochastic methods for doing that. So, you could follow this up with stochastic methods uh, which still try to look for better tours. Now, if you go back to the two city exchange uh, that we started with you can see that essentially this two city exchange is removing four edges and putting back four edges. So, it is just a special case of the four edge exchange if you if you remove four edges you could remove them in n c four ways and then you could put them back in many ways which I will leave as a small exercise for you to figure out, but the two city exchange is just one of those uh, neighbors that you can generate by a four edge exchange. So, with this we end the deterministic uh, uh, methods, uh, there is still one more deterministic method called taboo search that is still left for us to pursue. We will look at that in the next class and uh, then we will move to stochastic methods uh, and our goal all this while is going to be how to look at algorithms which escape from local maxima or local minima or in general from local optima.